Hey friends, welcome back to another video. And in this one, we are talking about my ultimate 2021 dream desk setup, desk tour, work from home, office tour, productive desk setup, any of those other keywords I should be throwing into the intro of this video. It's a question I keep getting, so it's about time I put one together. So in this video, we're gonna talk about everything I have sat behind me from the desk itself to the gear that I use and the accessories that hold it all together. As always, links will be in the description below. So if you want to buy one yourself, then just clicky, click, 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 click. Now this desk setup is something that I've taken a while to get to and I'm definitely not finished yet, but this is the current 2021 version of where I've got to. So first of all, let's just start off with the desk itself. And this is just a super basic and affordable desk because what I have here is the IKEA Kalbi kitchen worktop, which is very, very long. It's, it's two and a half meters long, which I absolutely love. I definitely like space when choosing a desk. And in this instance, I think size does matter for me since the more width and space that I have, the more I can actually use the space rather than just having say like a super deep desk where you can't actually use it other than just resting your arms on it. And this worktop is sitting on top of two IKEA Alex drawers units. Again, super cheap, pretty good quality and tons of storage space for like paperwork and random junk. But to be honest, I don't really need to use the drawers that much. They just usually house like random things. But then equally, I do kind of need something to keep the desk up, which they're really great at. Speaking of which, and because of the length of that worktop, I've added an additional leg in the middle just to support the weight. Uh, I definitely had some bowing in the middle of, of the desk, so um, I wanted to fix that before it came permanent. Again, all of this from Ikea. And as are the shelves I bought to try and tidy the room up a little bit. These are the Vjalbo shelves, both a single unit and a double width unit. And whilst we are talking about Ikea, a couple of accessories. This table lamp was brought from Ikea about like 10 years ago. They don't actually sell it anymore, so you can't seem to get it, but it serves its purpose with just a, a clean aesthetic. And, and then on the other side of the desk, I have just some fake greenery, you know, things to remind ourselves what the outside world used to look like, including a fake Christmas tree to remind ourselves of that one day when we were allowed to socialize before lockdown V3 happened. Good times. Under that, I have this little dude, Grogu from The Mandalorian. Just a little prop that adds some color to the desk and probably looks quite creepy in the video, but hey, he's a cute little guy. Stop touching things. Moving on from Ikea, let's get to the main part of the desk, which is the machine I'm using to power everything, or rather machines, because I run a dual Mac and PC setup right now. Ha! Take that, Mac versus PC people. Hello, I'm a Mac. Hello, I'm a PC. For my day-to-day -day work, I'm using this top-spec Apple M1 Mac Mini, which, if you check my last video, is a phenomenal machine. This machine has two terabytes of storage and 16 gig of memory, but we're talking better performance than a 16-inch i9 MacBook Pro with 32 gig of memory, with better power consumption, it's quiet. And in tests, when I exported footage from one of these videos that you're watching now, the M1 Mac Mini finished quicker than my 16-inch i9 MacBook Pro. And that was whilst running about like 30 other apps in the background, which is just insane when you consider that it's less than half the price of the 16-inch MacBook Pro. And without going too in-depth, on the Mac Mini, I'm running all of my general day-to-day -day apps, but it's also running my current home automation system called Indigo, which lets me control most of the things in the house, like the lights, the security, CCTV, window sensors, alarm, water sensors, so if the washing machine or, or the sinks leak, uh, light sensors to automatically control the lights when it's dark, and even the lawnmower, which I've just replaced with a new one because mine was getting pretty old, so I'll do one on that soon. Are we staying at home today? Well, yes. Yes, of course we're staying at home today. Oh, I'm worth talking to your fake friends. Anyway, attached to the M1 Mac Mini is the CalDigit TS3 Plus dock. And this thing gives me all of the expansion that I need on my Mac. On the front, that gives me an SD card slot, audio in, audio out, a USB-C and a USB-A. And then over on the back, we have Ethernet, DisplayPort, and just a ton of USB-C and USB-A ports just to connect all, all the other gadgets I have here on the desk. One notable accessory I also have attached to the 10 gig USB-C port on this dock is a 10 gig Ethernet adapter, which connects me directly to my NAS, which is a very recent addition, which I'll talk about in just a moment. All of this is connected to the beautifully wide 49 inch ultra wide Samsung G9 1000R curved display. Uh, link again is in the description below for, for a full review. On top of the screen, I have the Logitech C920 Pro webcam for all of those video calls that we're now so used to nowadays. Just nothing great about it, nothing bad, just eh, okay. Then I have the Elgato Stream Deck, which is basically just a keypad with a ton of shortcuts and macros. I mostly use this when live streaming and hooked it into my home automation so I can control things around the room and the house. Just a great little device and it can be used for so many different things again so that's just a great little box right there. Speakers wise I'm still rocking the original Harman Kardon sound sticks. They still put out great quality audio for when I'm not using my headphones so when I'm listening to music or watching videos or playing games they are just super great. And then other accessories I'm using the Logitech MX keys which 
are again really great, comfortable to type on, and allow you to switch between three different devices quickly, which is really easy between Mac and PC. And then in the mouse department, I'm currently using the original Logitech MX Master. I would upgrade to the MX Master 3, but I just can't find a reason. And these also go for super, super cheap on Amazon. I think this was like 20 or 30 pounds, so keep an eye out for that on Amazon. And I have these both sat on the Nodal desk pad, Knodal, however you pronounce it, which just adds a little bit more comfort and protects the desk from like scuffs or scratches. And then lastly, the only other accessory, so to speak, is the Spigen wireless charger that I have in the middle here, which is just used to charge my phone or AirPods or, or whatever else needs like wirelessly charging. Speaking of phones, I'm currently running with two. My main driver for the last year and a bit has been the iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's huge, like beautiful, works flawlessly, and I don't really have any issues with it at all. In fact, this is the first year where I haven't actually bothered upgrading to like the newer iPhone. Something that I normally say, and then a week later I'll go out and buy it anyway, but I don't know, this year seems different. Let's just see what the 12S or, you know, 13 brings. Interesting times. And then next to it, for now, I also have the Google Pixel 4a, which is completely tiny in comparison to the you know, massive 11 Pro Max. It's, it's light as a feather, and it's interesting. There'll be a video coming out about this one, hopefully on Sunday. So um, make sure you subscribe if you want to see that. But um, yeah, interesting times. I have been an iPhone user for the last like decade, and, and trying Android on this Pixel 4a has been like just super interesting. So um, that's all I'll give you for that right now. To finish off the Apple stuff, I'm also rocking the Apple Watch Series 5. Again, last year's model, but I personally see no reason to upgrade just yet. This is super useful as it unlocks my Mac for me when I'm near it and helps me take calls and, and gets like the important information to my wrist. And then lastly, I also have the M1 MacBook Air, which is the higher spec model and the upgraded 16 gig memory. Again, this thing is just absolutely flies, and, and this is what I use when moving around the house or relaxing on the sofa in the evening. I chose this over the iPad as, to be honest, the cost of this is the same as the cost of an iPad, plus their magic smart case thing anyway. And you can just do so much more with this that you can't do yet on an iPad. Over in PC land, and I'm also running a Ryzen 5 2600. Uh, nothing special, but we've got 16 gig of memory, a GeForce 2080, and to be honest, I haven't really been using it that much lately, as I've also got the new Xbox Series X, which now I mostly play on, and I just find it nicer to you know, chill out on the sofa and be sat on the sofa rather than in the same chair, which I'm sat at most days. But it's due an upgrade anyway, given that I can push it up to 240 hertz with the Samsung screen. Over onto storage now, and this is only a very recent purchase, as it's taken me a, a very long while to figure out what I wanted and what I needed. This is the brand new QNAP TS-H973AX which is an absolute beast of a NAS for the price. It does have a total of nine drive bays with four of them for SSDs and then two of those for NVMe storage. Built-in 10 gig ethernet, as well as dual 2.5 gig ethernet, and then eight gig of memory, which when you consider that this thing costs like 700 or 800 pounds, is super cheap when you look at the alternatives. To get that amount of storage and connectivity, it's just a fantastic value. In terms of what I put into this thing, I have five 16 terabyte Seagate Exos drives, which are like enterprise disks typically used for, for servers. And I'll link up here and down below to the video about how I managed to save a ton of money when buying these drives. But these five drives basically give me 64 terabytes of usable storage, so plenty of space to store all of my data. This is then connected to my Mac Mini via 10 gig to get those super fast like data transfer rates when I need to offload video footage. And then also connects to the network via one gig so I can get to the data on you know, my laptop and anything else on the network. That is all the computing bits done with. Now just the last couple of items to go. And first let's talk audio with the Rodecaster Pro Desk, which is here on the right side. This thing is basically a podcasting desk, which over the years I've used to record interviews from my IT business, a few solo podcasts for my Not A Business Coach podcast, which I should probably update soon, and also live streams. But given where we are now, I'm mostly just using this for video calls just to level up my audio. And then it's connected to the Rode Procaster mic, which has really clear audio. It's mounted on the PSM1 shock mount and then onto the PSA1 boom arm, which just allows me to swivel this thing out of the way when I don't need to use it anymore. Then over in headphone land, I am currently switching between a few, the Apple AirPod Pros, which are great and convenient, they just don't stay in my ears that well as, no, not as well as the original AirPods did, which can be super frustrating. For any interviews, podcasts, or presentations, I tend to use my custom molded in-ear headphones, which are made by a company called ACS Custom here in the UK. The ones I have here are super old, like 10 years old. I used them like a decade ago for playing drums and those kind of things. They basically keep everything, and I mean everything out, so you cannot hear a single thing except for what's playing through those headphones. 
really great for drumming. So I've recently bought a new pair and I'm due to see the audiologist, I think they're called, um, in a few days time where they take like molds of your ears, which then get sent away and then made into these custom headphones. So if you are looking for the best quality, then I would highly, highly recommend going to get a pair of custom in-ear monitors. Last one on audio and a very recent purchase, as in yesterday, I've got the Apple HomePod mini, which I swapped out for a Sonos speaker as I realized that the wall mounted iPad I'm using for like my hub to control the house is now too old to be used as the Apple Home Bridge, I think it's called. So I can't use the Apple Home Automation when I'm out of the house anymore. Not that I'm out of the house that much. This was a relatively cheap way to get that working again. And bonus is, it's also a good quality speaker. I just wish it would integrate with Spotify and all the other things that aren't Apple, but that's Apple for you. For lighting, all of this is being lit by Philips Hue. We have a bulb in the lamp on the left-hand side, one of the older style bulbs, which meant I had to buy an adapter to get it to fit in, which is why it kind of hangs out a little bit too much. Over on the other side, I'm using the Hue Bloom, and then mounted onto the back of the desk, I'm using the Hue LED strip just to add a splash of color to the wall and, and everything else that's going on there. I also do have Hue mounted in the lights above me, but since the ceiling is a little bit wrecked whilst we're trying to wait for some uh, work to be done, I won't show that to you just yet. But that just means I can tap a button and the light just completely changes in this room, which is just a really, really nice to have thing. And then lastly, 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 the final thing is a thing that I'm sat in. And right now, this is the Herman Miller Aerion chair. These things are super expensive, but if you look around, you can pick them up at hugely discounted prices, particularly nowadays where, you know, offices are emptying entire floors of furniture as they move to home working. So it's a really, really great time to pick up one of these chairs at a super good discount. I think that just about wraps it up. So hopefully I haven't missed anything in all of that. But like I said, I will link to everything down below. So if you see anything you like, you just jump straight to it there. I'll also be posting a video about all the other side of my room, all the studio setup and video gear and lighting and all that kind of stuff. So um, stick around if that's something you'd like to see. And I've also been buying a ton more of uh, home automation gadgets. So again, if you wanna see a video on all the home automation stuff I'm doing, then let me know. Otherwise, please do like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are posted. And if you wanna join and become a channel member as just like a little bit of thanks for putting out all this free content, it's just 99p per month and you can get to that by clicking the join button down below. Thanks for watching. Talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.